news today. More delays to Castle Street in Hull and antisocial behaviour on Grimsby's Freeman Street. Plus, Izzy Sinclair and Izzy Beale be here to talk about a charity gig in Hull. We're still three years from work starting to upgrade Castle Street in Hull. Plans were originally in place to commence the work next year, but the scheme has been again put back. That's according to Councillor Martin Mansey, who's portfolio holder for Economic Regeneration, Investment and Planning on Hull City Council. He says they're extremely disappointed by Highways England's decision, and it's not something the council can influence. The scheme includes lowering part of Castle Street, widening the road and building a new walkway over it. The project should now be completed by 2025. North East Lincolnshire Council are proposing changes to libraries across the county. A council cabinet meeting will be held next week to determine the future of the libraries to make them sustainable for the future. It comes as a result of the council's diminishing budget. Options to be considered include reducing opening hours and some lunchtime and one day a week closures. Also to be discussed at their cabinet meeting next week is plans to change the way rubbish is collected around North East Lincolnshire. If given the green light, fortnightly collections of waste and recycling on alternate weeks will be implemented from November to try and save over £400,000. 75% of local authorities in the UK already operate with this system. Antisocial behaviour is on the rise on Freeman Street in Grimsby, according to business owners in the town. They've reported incidents of people consuming drugs and alcohol in broad daylight and are now calling for a crackdown. Our reporter Stephen West spoke to a shopkeeper on Freeman Street who says people abusing drugs and alcohol can become argumentative. Instances of drug and alcohol fueled antisocial behaviour appear to be increasing in the Freeman Street area. I went along to Freeman Street and spoke to a concerned shop owner who explained to me the kind of behaviour he's been witnessing. The main problems are um, alcohol, alcoholism and drug taking during the daytime. Drug dealers readily come along the street in bright and bikes to supply. Alcohol's available very, very cheaply. So as the day goes on, we end up with people getting drunk. They sit on the pavements. When they become drunk, they're now laying on the pavements or the, uh, the drugs overtake them and then the comatose laid out an ambulance sensor to come for them and we're getting this most days of the week Monday to Friday um, and now we've got an added problem of people sitting outside of premises actually asking for money literally begging they urinate up shutters in doorways they leave litter cans just throw them out nobody bothers about the dustbins um, and often they get uh, argumentative I've never seen them be a threat to the public, but once they start getting argumentative, they start shouting and swearing, very abusive. Yeah, we obviously run operations down there to look at any begging issues that we have, to look at antisocial behaviour. We work closely with the shopkeepers to understand what's affecting them and what's affecting their businesses. We're asking questions around what types of alcohol are being bought to see if we can work with licensing to understand more around that issue and what we can do to prevent that the issue uh, moving on and moving forward. We also work with Harbour Place, uh, which is uh, in the area, which does give care to people in need. Um, we work closely with them to understand actually you know, what do the residents of that particular area want and need from police. And equally we do enforce uh, the public space protection orders that are in place, any antisocial behaviour that takes place there, we do deal with that robustly. Mm -hmm. uh, we have regular patrols that attend the area. We obviously have an issue whereby we need to sometimes be in the area to see what's going on or capture it via CCTV so that we can take action. It's really upsetting to hear people are intimidating in the area. That's not absolutely what we want and we will take robust action to ensure that people aren't intimidated. Sometimes it can be a perception issue where people see people sat in the street and think they'll be intimidated where actually they'll sit and chat amongst themselves and not cause any issues for members of the public. Right. What I would say, if people are feeling intimidated, they shouldn't let them put it off going to the area, but tell the local shopkeepers, tell us, tell the police what's going on, um, and then together we can tackle that. North East Lincolnshire Council issued the following statement. Freeman Street is subject to a public protection order, a useful legal tool that gives police the power to warn people who are drinking in the street and behaving in an antisocial manner. In some cases, such as those involving people with addiction to alcohol, it's more effective to bring the matter to court where orders for treatment programmes can be given. 
There are a range of health and social care support services in the area for people with alcohol or drug problems. In particular, the council commissions the Foundation Substance Misuse Service to offer help and support to those suffering from drug and alcohol addictions. This includes a direct access service at its main base on Queen Street in Grimsby. We would urge people and business owners who witness antisocial behaviour to report it to the police by calling 101. I'm joined now by Izzy Sinclair and Izzy Bealby who are here to talk about a charity gig they're organising to raise funds for a good cause. Thanks for coming in. Thank you. Firstly then, tell me a little bit what the good cause is. Um, we are raising money for One Day, which is, stands for We Are Not Dead Yet, which is basically Music Against Mental Illness. Right, it's okay. an organisation for mental illness and all of the proceeds from that go to Mind, the mental health charity. OK, and where's, where's this idea come from then? Uh, basically, we got the idea because as he's friends with Mikey, who knows, who basically, his fiance Grace sadly uh, died um, mm -hmm. from depression and he basically set up the charity off the back of that. And because it's kind of a more of a personal thing rather than doing a, a larger charity, yeah. we wanted to keep it smaller because obviously the smaller charities kind of need more support than the larger ones. Yeah. That mm -hmm. was what we were going for. So we also wanted to do a gig because, as you know, there's quite a lot of um, bands and it's music kind of brings people together, which is also obviously a big part of helping combat mental illness. So should we'll get some of the, the important details in first then. <laughs> Tell us how, how and where people can get involved. Um, well... The gig is on the 4th September at O'Reilly's on Beverly Road in Hull. Mm -hmm. um, tickets are on Skiddle for £5 and uh, are £8. On, on what? On what, sorry? Skiddle. It's what, a what Skiddle? I have to ask <laughs> you that. It's, a, it's a, just like a, a ticket website. Right, OK. So we'll obviously be on the time. <laughs> and £8 on the door. Um, we've Don't got... So. Can't reach it. Yeah. You've also got um, a poster as well, haven't you? Yeah. yeah. Which explains some of the people that people will be able to see. What do we know about these, pe about these bands? We have Your Illuminations, Gaza's Goats, which is another team on our NCS. They've made right, a song okay. about mental illness and the performing it. We've got Frontiers, That's the Only, yeah. Yeah. Ollie Smith and the Black Books, and then we've got In Your Prime as well. Your Illuminations are our headliners. They'll be on um, 10.30 to 11. So what kind of things have you learnt then from, from having this event with, under your jurisdiction and your responsibility? Well, the whole of NCS has been really good. It's with Tigers Trust. Um, mm -hmm. And it's basically a four-week thing. First two weeks, you're kind of getting skills, team building. Mm -hmm. Last two weeks, it is about your social action, which is a... It's helped us kind of organisation and team like teamwork. Yeah. Giving back to the community yeah. as well. You, didn't, you did an event last week as well, did you? Uh, we had a three-legged walk around <laughs> Hull um, to raise money. That sounds like a disaster. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was interesting. Um, but, um, yeah, it was kind of to symbolise how it's better to be with someone than be apart, which yeah. is a big part of combating mental illness. Okay, and it's obviously a cause that you've got very close to your hearts as well. Yeah. Okay, um, just talking about Wandy then, a little bit more, what do we, I suppose the, the importance of having mental health provision in this area as well, it's a, it's a cause that's supposed to become more, more in the headlines in the last couple of years, isn't it? Yeah. It's yeah, because one in four people are known to have a mental illness and mm -hmm. so many people like stay quiet about it because they're like perhaps afraid to be open sick, about it. Around. And hopefully yeah. doing events like this. So we're yeah. trying to raise awareness and like it's okay to talk about it and Brilliant. get together. Thank you very much for coming in. That thank is you all. Coming. Cheers, thank, thank you. you. Now here's Jack with all the latest sports news. A young Hull City sider is expected to take to the field this evening in the Carabao Cup. The, C the Tigers are away to Doncaster Rovers this evening, but with a number of players injured and Sam Kluke is set for a move to Swansea, it will be an inexperienced City lineup as Leonid Slutsky protects his remaining first team for the league. The game kicks off at the Keepmoat Stadium at 7.45. Elsewhere, Grimsby Town hosts Derby in the e rearranged EFL Cup game. The two sides face each other two weeks ago at Blundell Park, but the game has to be abandoned in the first half due to a waterlogged pitch. Sam Jones misses the game through suspension, while Aquasi Asante, Jamie Osborne and Scott Vernon are all injured. There's been some sad news at Scunthorpe United today. Their former manager Bill Green has died aged 66. He led the Iron to their first ever game at Wembley back in the 1992 playoffs, having taken them to the semi-finals the previous year. He managed 43, 43 wins in the 101 games at Glanford Park. And as Hull FC prepare for this weekend's Challenge Cup final, they've made a new recruit. Hakeem Maloudi, who spent 
some of the early season on trial with the black and whites has taken to his social media to announce that he has pended two year contract status from 2018. He will be hoping his new club are back to back win cup winners by then and will be with the team as they set off for Wembley on Thursday's show. And that's all for the sport. Thanks very much, Jack. That's it for today. As always, if you've got a new story you think we should be covering, please get in touch with one of the usual ways. You can call us on 01472 315561, email news at estuary.tv or look out for us on Facebook or Twitter. We look forward to hearing from you. Remember, there's more from the Edinburgh Fringe following us if you're watching us live. Until tomorrow, good afternoon.